<laughs> chortle, chortle. <laughs> On a different note, BlackBerry is due out with quarterly numbers before the start of the U.S. markets later today. John Ford has a preview. <laughs> BlackBerry reports earnings later tonight for fiscal Q4. Uh, a few things that make that particularly interesting. First, uh, what Wall Street's expecting, revenues of $2.8 billion and a loss of $0.31 cents per share. But really, uh, the, the other thing has to do with short interest. There's more than 30 uh, percent short interest in BlackBerry stock right now, and it shows kind of in how the stock's been moving over the past several quarters. The last eight quarters on the earnings report, uh, the stock has moved up either 5 or 7 percent or down double digits. So a lot of expectation of volatility here. A few numbers that are going to be important to watch. First, whatever BlackBerry says about the launch of the Z10 in Canada and the UK. The launch looked pretty strong uh, to begin with, but did that continue? Any color they give on that or the U.S. launch is important. There's only a month's worth of sales in Canada and the U.K. to talk about in the quarter itself. Then we want to see a BlackBerry uh, 7 sales held up despite the fact that the 10 was coming. Finally, subscriber numbers. For the first time, uh, BlackBerry subscriber number actually dropped by a million last quarter. want to see what it does this quarter. If it's down by just another million, that's in line with Wall Street's expectations, but if it drops by more than that, that could be a problem. For CNBC, I'm John Fort. And let's talk more about this. Joining us is Gregorius uh, Kuteris, who is the general manager of Upstream. Uh, nice to have you on board with us. Uh, the amount of short sellers in BlackBerry, that just tells the story, doesn't it? That 30% uh, in the stock are just, uh, of stock has been lent out now to short sellers. Where do you think it's going from here? Uh, it's interesting. Uh, the numbers that will be released today, we should definitely look at them very closely. However, for me, I think it's the next quarter, the current quarter we're going through right now, which will be very telling for uh, BlackBerry. Uh, keep in mind that uh, when they launched the Z10, it only uh, came out in uh, the UK, Canada, uh, the UAE, India, and a few more markets. So key markets for them, but obviously not their biggest market, which is the United States. And it was uh, launched with AT&T last week. Verizon is launching it today. Uh, the figures they will have for sales for last quarter, they only cover one month of that quarter, so one third. Uh, if they're approaching one million units, well, that's a very good result. Still, the data points will not be there to be able to extrapolate accurately uh, what the sales figure will look for the next year. It's been in a downward spiral for so long now. You've got to wonder whether even you know, the best phone that they can put out to the market will make any difference right now. Uh, they've taken their time. They have definitely taken their time. They're uh, several quarters late, probably about a year late. The product they have out there right now is quite competitive. Very good reception from uh, analysts, very good reception from the market. It has some very interesting features. We still have to wait for the Q10, which will be released soon, and which will have the physical keyboard, and that has always been their strength. We've spoken a lot this week about business models being broken, in particular for in relation to Cyprus, but you've got to wonder, you know, BlackBerry had that enterprise business market so enough. Is their business model broken now because Apple has managed to successfully bust into that category and even Samsung to an extent? Samsung to an extent, yes, you're right. Uh, with their Knox platform, they're trying to go after the BlackBerry enterprise servers. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. There is also the bring your own device movement, so IT departments letting people bring on their own devices and hooking up to their network. Uh, keep in mind that uh, BlackBerry still has that 79 million user base. Approximately 30 million of those, of those subscribers are with uh, corporate companies, right? And they've been holding off updating their device fleet, uh, waiting for the new device launches. So, like I said, this quarter will be really telling. How much are we brewing up for another row between the operators and the handset manufacturers? I remember years ago when data was struggling to break the 10% level. The operators blamed, blamed the handset makers and, uh, and vice versa as well. Now it seems that there are concerns about selling models. Uh, I know there's been issues about Apple and its selling model in Europe. I also looked at the story of my, our affiliate yesterday, MSNBC, about T-Mobile USA uh, ripping up um, these long-term contracts and going for simple $50 a month plans as well. Are we seeing any meaningful changes on the way these phones are sold and, and the subsidized handset selling model. The interesting thing there is that uh, at least in Western Europe in the States uh, you've got a third party now in the picture which is uh, Apple and Google through the IO, uh, iOS and the Android operating systems and their app stores and they're taking a significant share out of the wallet of the users. Uh, this is not the case in emerging markets so we conducted some research last uh, month uh, in view of the Mobile World Congress and uh, in uh, emerging markets, you can see that the mobile operators still have a chance of controlling the game a lot more than their counterparts in the developed world have done. 
and also interestingly enough blackberry uh, in a lot of those emerging markets latin america uh, middle east sub-saharan africa they have a strong following for example in nigeria in terms of propensity to buy uh, blackberry devices are actually the second most desirable behind samsung they it's interesting isn't it we talk about mobile telephony and m payments for instance and it's not often i see a subject that year after year Europe and the US is lagging way behind the developing world and, and it, because I guess the lack of sophistication of the banking system in certain parts mm -hmm. of Africa for instance and payments they're light years ahead of us in Europe aren't they? Yes they are but uh, you have to keep in mind that uh, in those parts of the world they don't have any alternatives they yeah, don't have yeah, PayPal they don't have credit cards. True but it's driven innovation isn't it? Necessity is driven of innovation. Of course and the same thing happens with smartphones in a lot of those uh, countries smartphones and uh, wireless internet so mobile internet are the only means of accessing the network. Um, apart from the, the TMS live feed, uh, Henry, what do you use your phone for? Um, that's a very good question. I use my phone for, um, you can call me a lot, words with friends, uh, very definitely. Yeah. Um, so I have two phones? No, I, I have to say, I, I used to have a work Blackberry and I had an iPhone and now I actually do can get all my emails on my, on my work, my, my iPhone, so I've actually dropped the Blackberry altogether. Um, there's nothing on the, the enterprise server staff and the security that you miss about BlackBerry on that. No. You're having a QWERTY keyboard? Yeah, no, I'm I, I just, just, just bit about too, okay. A bit yeah. too modern man now for yeah. that, yeah. Um, in terms of, um, obviously, you've mentioned Vodafone before. You like Vodafone, you like the price of Vodafone as well. The position of the operators in Europe, though, it is challenged by the regulators on a regular basis, and rightly or wrongly, they, they still seem to want to go after them on a, on a consistent basis over pricing. Is yeah. that a threat? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I think it's a, a threat we, we know about. Um, so, mobile termination rates would be the, the, the key sort of pricing issue. Um, we've also got um, quite, quite large numbers being paid for Spectrum for 4G as well, so that's another, another issue as well. But I think, uh, as I say, in aggregate, you look at the European telecom space with, a, I think, a little bit of trepidation, but I do think Vodafone stands out as a special sit just because of its US operation in the form of Verizon. Yeah. Um, we can't have this discussion without mentioning Apple, and I noticed earlier in the week UBS we put it's Apple as its most preferred stock out there in terms of you know whether it's a buy or not these days. How do you weigh up the Apple story when you look at uh, the amount of stock that it's selling still, uh, whether it's going to hold up to expectations and the fact that the stock's been beaten down so much already? It's all about expectations. I think you're completely right there. Uh, they've uh, had fantastic products coming up over the last five years uh, and everybody's asking what's the next thing to come from them. Uh, the iWatch or whatever they will come up within this year, hopefully, uh, will be a major product for them. It could be a turning point. Uh, definitely the markets have lost some confidence in the stock. Keep in mind they're sitting on a huge pile of cash as well and they have to do something with that. We're going to leave it there. I'm just going to um, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. Gregoris Kouteris, who is the general manager of Upstream. And I'll just do Nigel's email, regular correspondent. Happy Easter to you, Nigel. Uh, he's talking about Chris Gent and what he did. It's a slightly different conversation. But uh, at the turn of the century, Chris Gent, Fred Goodwin, uh, John Brown of BP, there was a certain psyche in management. Uh, now we have a much more cautious, uh, income-driven, consistently large cash balance sheet-driven uh, kind of set of management in the UK. Are we better or worse off for it? Um, it's good. I mean, I think it's what we absolutely needed in response to the financial crisis, um, but what we now need is our companies to lead us out of this and to invest. So all too often we see, you know, capex bills being deferred, so I think we do need some more corporate spend coming through um, because, let's face it, that's the only legacy society that has the money to spend. It's not our governments, it's not our consumers, it is our companies. All right, lovely. Thank you very much indeed for that. And as I say, Gregorius, thank you very much for joining us as well. Scoreboxeurope.cmc.com. We've got time for squeezing a couple more emails.